Recording has started. What's up, everybody? Good to see everybody. Uh, well, I'm not really seeing many people yet, but I can see Molly and Casey joining me today. Really looking forward to this conversation. We had the chance to meet last week, and um, I'm a user of their product and a fan. So, Molly, Casey, thanks for taking some time to hop on with us. Thank you, Brant. Yeah, thanks for having us. Looking forward to this. So, uh as a basketball coach one of the issues i really have is gym space so yeah. especially it's a problem i've had every year but never has it been more difficult than during the pandemic to find places for my club <laughs> for the camps for the clinics for the things that i do in basketball so your product has been great. Give us a little background. Either one of you can start, but tell us a little bit about Sports Source, how the idea came about, and how you guys have progressed to where you are now. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'll start. Um, well, the <clears throat> idea came about similar to what you're talking about right now, Brent. Um, I hold I played basketball. Um, I was an athlete. I was a coach. I was a trainer. Um, and that same very problem always plagued me, right? It's hard to find a gym to rent out to, hard to find a gym to work out in. Um, you would think that, you know, with the high profile athletes that I was training, it would be a lot easier or that, you know, uh, gyms would be a lot more accommodating to us, but that's never the case. So when I opened my facility in 2017, I thought kind of all of those rental issues would be put to, you know, to rest. But come to find out, owning your own brick and mortar and having a facility is own set of challenges and problems than a, being a trainer. Um, so what I found during that time was, you know, the, the time from like nine to three when kids are in school, um, it's pretty dead. It's pretty idle in that gym. And not only that, just idle time, but the way I was kind of fielding um, these rentals or requests, it was through text messages, it was through websites, it was people walking in. So there's just a lot of different ways and just unorganized. Uh, so I thought about, you know, just kind of connecting the two, you know, if, if we can have a way for trainers, athletes, coaches, and just the general public that want to do something physically active. Um, there's no platform today for us to be able to just kind of connect with those facilities. Um, and if you think about kind of the world we live in with Uber, Airbnb, Turo, you can rent everything at the click of a button. So essentially like this sports, and physical activity like sector was just left out of this shared economy. So as I was um, running my facility, I was training Molly's son and uh, just share my idea with Molly and you know kind of getting her take and I'll let her go into a yeah. bit about that. <clears throat> I'm very similar to you, Brent. I was a youth coach and I was a parent in this whole circus too of complex uh, scheduling practices. And so, you know, I kind of told Casey from that side, like, gosh, yeah, you're not the only one facing this problem because he kind of took it on himself. Like, gosh, do I just suck at this? Like, what's going on? I was like, no, this is this is an industry wide problem because as a youth coach or a parent, you know, they're often the ones tasked with finding these facilities and sourcing them. And we were doing yeah. the same thing, like calling around forever or, you know, you're driving somewhere that's super far from your house and kids are up late. And then, you know, Saturday morning, you can grab maybe like a 7 a.m. And so. Um, I kind of told Casey, yeah, I'm having the same problem on the other side and I have a business background. So like, we just kind of thought maybe we could make something happen. And so kind of put our heads together and started diving into research and, um, kind of figuring out that, wow, this is really something that could help a lot of people. And so that's when we just kind of gathered up our tech team and just kind of started, started building it. What have been some of the major challenges so far? What are some of the things that you guys are really working to overcome? Yeah, well, I, I would say in the beginning, um, since M M Molly and I, we don't really have a background in tech, it yeah. was, you know, how do you source developers? How do you get the code? Who's going to design it? Um, so just from that aspect, that was challenging in itself. Yeah, finding um, people you trust, talented <laughs> people that are going to speak to kind of the market segment that you're trying to identify, when finding people that really speak this language and can build technology it took some time. Yeah, well, luckily we did. We found great developers. Um, and then now is just, I would say, Molly, you could chime in too. I would yeah. say it's just getting people to do something different, right? Yeah. So for the longest time, it's always just been, you know, I know a friend who's been using a facility, <laughs> so we're just going to kind of make contact, just word of mouth. Um, and then getting the facilities to also just learn how to use it, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a behavior shift, I guess. 
um, because they're not calling or not emailing. Um, It's just right on the platform. So just I think with always just educating, um, it takes a little time and just getting people to kind of change that. Yeah, I kind of think of like the first time you order groceries delivered to your house, you have all these like things, the voices in your head saying, but wait, I can't pick up the avocado or wait, I can't look at what's on the shelf. And then once you do it, you're like, whoa, I'm never going back to the grocery store again. And so I think for us, just uh, building awareness and getting people to come try it. Once people, you know, go on there and realize that they can have all this inventory at their fingertips or as a host, they realize how much time they can save by pushing their bookings digitally through an app. Um, They love it. But when you're teaching consumers to do something new, it's just it just takes some time. So just trying to trying to build awareness and get people to, to give it a try. Well, like I mentioned, I am a client or a user of the app, and I found it it's very easy, very user friendly. I mean, especially if you've used like an Airbnb or something yeah. similar to that, it's very similar, easy to use. Um, like I said, I'm not a really techie guy, and I was able to figure it out and get the app and okay. used it to book yeah eight or ten times yeah at a location and. And I can see where from the other side, if you have a space, whether that's even a back, I think you have like backyard yeah. courts yeah. even that yeah. people can rent out. So if you have space, it's an amazing way to get to people that you might not know yeah. need to right. rent space. Yeah. Well, I can, I definitely see, saw the value, see the value and yeah. can understand why both sides would be interested in using it because like i said if you have an empty gym space especially if it's you know the overhead on a gym i've never right. owned my own but i know <laughs> people who have and talk to them and that's one of the challenges is when it's empty yeah you're not making money so having people in the gym is important and then just the ease of the booking of not having to oh crap i forgot to somebody text me about that and have to get the paper book out and write yeah. the times down. I can't tell you what the times the gym's available right now because I'm not at the gym with my book. And right. so yeah. there is definitely I can see where coaches will love the app. And as you expand into new cities and new places, but I can also see where you're talking about the challenge of getting people to know about it. Right. And then feel like, oh, well, maybe I should check it out. Right. But I think once you get new cities and you get more traction, I think it's going to really catch on. And so I'm excited to see where you guys go from Portland. And are you expanding to cities or are you expanding? How, how is that going with your expansion pro- process? Yeah, we are. We have um, kind of a test facility in Indianapolis right now. Um, and then we have like a 25 city expansion plan to move into. So um, we're trying to take care of Portland first because this is kind of where our hearts are and the communities that have supported us and, and where we know there's a need, right, from our own experience. Yeah, but yeah, from then we'll go into 25 cities and, you know, we don't really see our platform being limited by any vertical. We want people to be able to use it in Orlando if they want to go do Zumba. We want people that are, you know, Texas football to come on and use it. And so we really just um, want to make it available across across all those verticals, which takes you know time. But um, yeah, that's our plan to just go nationwide and worldwide um, with all. Yeah, letting just let users be creative in whatever mm-hmm. they want. So a host can list a basketball court, but a user could have a birthday party or play dodgeball or yeah. you know something creative in that space. It doesn't necessarily have to be only rented out for basketball. Uh, so by photo shoot or video shoot. Um, so just anything like that. Yeah. And one of the things Casey and I discovered kind of when we were doing our research that really was a good motivator for us is um, the, there's this organization called the Global Wellness Institute, and they essentially like keep all the data and information about wellness and sports globally. Yeah. And uh, they were speaking to like childhood obesity and people being out of shape. And it was so fascinating because the number two reason for that was simply a lack of convenient access to facilities to go move their bodies. And so, you know, it's, it's really a worldwide problem and it's not that there aren't spaces. It's just like Casey was talking about, there's just this disconnect, you know, globally between people getting the information they need and having a place close to them to go, you know, do something fun or active. Yeah, for sure. I can see where it's a little bit of the, chicken and egg trying to get facilities 
Mm -hmm. And if they say, well, you don't have many users yet, but if you don't have many users, how, so I, how have you been able to find facilities that are willing to use your guys' platform? Yeah. So in the beginning, like right now, it's just a lot of my close personal connections, athletes and trainers and coaches that just have opened their own facilities. Um, but then a lot of it has just been kind of just, you know, on the ground, hard work, grunt work, just picking up the phone, uh, kind of dialing for dollars type thing. Um, we've been at some events. Yeah. Know. And we're just really transparent with the host facility. It's been really great to see their reception because I think their current processes are so chaotic that they're really welcoming of anything that's going to make their life simple, even if they know they have to wait a little bit. But some of them are also just using it for their current rentals. So um, they've been really welcoming. And I think a lot of them are excited to just be a part of something new. And they're really supportive of us, fellow community business owners, and just been transparent with them that this is a journey and we're all on it together and we're here to support you and learn from you. And something kind of cool about the early facilities that are coming on is that, you know, we're allowing them to speak into the technology and really be like hands on with us. And so they can say, hey, this would work for my gym if it were different, or, you know, it would be really cool for the app. So they're kind of like ground floor participants too, where they can really just have a say and kind of like the long-term growth of our company. So that's been really fun too. Yeah. And essentially they, it's at no cost to them, right? So if, if they list their facility, it doesn't matter if nobody ever uses it or doesn't use it for two or three weeks, like it doesn't bother them at all. So yeah. that's why we definitely wanted to start on that side, you know, cause they're a little bit more patient in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that for sure. It's, I mean, it's low risk for them, yeah. right? They're getting their business out there or their gym visible. <laughs> Um, exactly. But I can see where if you're an early adopter on the other side, like I feel kind of like I was, there's limited inventory. Yeah. As you grow the inventory, obviously yeah. I'm sticking with it and not, and then I keep, che I keep <laughs> checking it, looking for new gyms or new facilities that might be yeah. available. But yeah. I think that that is a good way to start is just obviously word of mouth and, yeah. hey, do you know any gyms and contacts and using those leveraging those contacts you already have and going out and making new ones yeah and we have about 12 new spaces that are like onboarding this week so yeah keep checking <laughs> I, will, I will check i will definitely check that out i think i think our hope is that you know at some point it'll become the norm just like if you're a restaurant and you don't have uber eats you're the outlier right so but it didn't used to always be that way and so you know we know this is the the hard work phase the acquisition but then our hope is that, you know, eventually it's just like, it's the norm for your gym to be, yeah. to be on sports stars. That's great. And I, I like the humility, like you said, of you, you know, kind of telling people up front, Hey, we're a startup, we're, we're growing. And I appreciate that as a user that you've yeah. said, Hey, if there's an issue or any glitches or anything, reach out, let us know. Yeah. Cause you know, that way, if you feel like, Oh, this is fully developed, there's more expectations, but if you're right. kind of in that, well, this is a startup and I want to yeah. see it succeed and grow and do well and be a part of that. And obviously I want to make it help make it better from having known you two. Yeah. But, um, recently you guys were big, I'll say big winners of a competition <laughs> in Beaverton. Um, tell us a little bit about that competition and give a shout out to some of the people there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's put on by the Oregon Tech Business Center. They go by OTBC. Um, it's an organization in Beaverton who's been doing this for about six years. They've been supporting startups um, in collaboration with the city of Beaverton, who funds it also. And so they open up this application process. It's called the Beaverton uh, Startup Challenge. And um, about 50 companies applied. And then they picked a cohort of five businesses as their winners for 2021. So we were fortunate to be selected as one of those five. And we're really excited about it being in Beaverton because that's just like where our, where Casey's sports, um, his gym was located. It's where I live. And what comes with that is kind of, um, well, an office space, which will be huge for us. <laughs> um, we're looking for interns. Shout out if anyone wants an internship. <laughs> yes. um, but also what comes with that is just mentorship um, from the OTBC community. So people there with decades of experience in entrepreneurship and tech who can kind of walk alongside us as a startup and they provide mentorship and things like um, 
accounting and marketing and growth and just a really supportive community there. And then it comes with a small investment too. So um, we're excited. The winners, uh, previous winners of that competition have been really successful. So we feel really good and honored to be selected by them um, yeah. for that award. Yeah. It's really cool. That's awesome. What, um, so is it, is a business plan that you submit and then they review that? And then it was they, a lot of, yeah, a lot of documents and then multiple interviews. Yeah. So where they grill you. Yeah, <laughs> basically yeah. pitch, pitch like a shark time, tank, man. the yes. beer tank, shark tank. <laughs> yes. You know, exactly. better know your numbers, right? right. Yes. Yeah. You got grilled, yes. You did get grilled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was cool. That's great. Well, I really appreciate it. And I will reiterate that if you're watching this and you're a student or somebody looking for an internship, um, working on a startup is pretty exciting. And as it grows, I'm sure there's more opportunity that will come with that. So yeah. what areas or what strengths would you seek in an intern? Yeah. Um, I'd say definitely somebody that's good with social media. That's always needed. Um, somebody that's just outgoing or like for like some type of sales calls, um, marketing stuff. What else did you say? Yeah, sales, marketing, social, um, really anyone, even if there's a tech person out there, um, we yeah. just, yeah, anyone that wants to get, I know that breaking into the sports industry can sometimes be hard, especially in a small market like this. And um, we love to work with good people. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've really built this during COVID with, with, we were really fortunate to have a group of interns around us and it really made a difference. And so, yeah, anyone that's ready to hustle and has the flexibility of the craziness of a startup, I think would be a good fit. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I really like to do quotes. I'm a big quote person. I'm posting them. I'm saying them. I have them around my house here, just <clears throat> reminders of certain things. And so I ask you guys, if you had anything that kind of either motivated you, inspired you, um that you would like to share so do you guys have something that yeah, you would like yeah. to share mm -hmm. with us we do yeah okay. i'm gonna give you two though so i'm gonna give like the we have an internal one between the two of us and casey's probably tired of hearing it but what i always say is there's always a solution um <laughs> and it sounds kind of corny and whatever but it's it's so true right like when you can't figure something out there's someone else out there that does know you just need to ask the right person or maybe you need to shift your environment or maybe you need to step away from it but building a business there's new challenges and things every day and so there's always a solution is is kind of like our little mantra between the two of us but <laughs> the smarter man simon sinek says working hard for something we don't care about is called stress but working hard for something we love is called passion and yeah. i think you know no startup gets off the ground if you don't love what you're doing um it's so much work it's time it's patience it's being able to accept failure and defeat over and over and over again and so I think um, gotcha. us having that passion um, for just wanting to help the sports community is really what propels us forward. I love that. Obviously, start with why. And he's he's one of the best um, that I've heard as far as that mindset. Yeah. Uh, and I think startups, you have to have that mindset of delayed gratification. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes people think, oh, you're an entrepreneur. You're going to be rich. And it's right. like, that's not the way it works. No, and you hope, I mean, and you hope <laughs> right. you make money with it. But if you, you know, I, I grew up with wood heat. And mm. one of my quotes is you don't split the firewood when you're cold. That's awesome. And so I grew up in Southern Oregon where we were splitting firewood when it's a hundred yeah. degrees outside in the summer, because if you don't, it's going to get wet. And then right. when you get cold, you're not going to be able to split it because it's going to be wet. Yeah. And so that kind of preparing for the future and, you know, um, you don't eat the fruit the day you plant the seed yeah. and all that, those quotes. But I think that having that vision yeah. is important and it takes faith, you know, which yeah. faith is believing in something you can't see. Yeah. That's kind of the definition of faith and you can have a faith in God, you can have a faith in a successful app, but yeah. it takes a little of that faith to believe in something that you can't see yet. And yeah. that's why early adopters and early investors are special because you've 
sold them not on the finished product because it's not a finished product yet. Right. You've sold them on the vision of what sports source will be yeah. down the road, not what it is now. It's good now, but I know it's going to be better in the future. And that comes in yeah. with that delayed gratification, yeah. but you don't just wake up and the garden's grown and you're eating the fruit. You got to no. eat it. You got to water it. You got to do all those things along the way. Yeah. And another one is, you know, people always want to be a part of the, like the outcome, not the journey, but the right. journey who during the journey, that's who you figure out who you want to be with during yeah. the outcome. Yeah. You know, people always want to be there when, you know, you're cutting down nets or you're celebrating victories, but who was it that was with you in the trenches, in the weight room when no one's watching, yeah. you know, everybody wants to be there when you're, when you make it to the lead or make it to the NBA, but who is it that's been there along the way? So I'm really excited for you guys. Um, I love that quote, Simon, Simon, Simon Sinek, Sinek. Yeah. I think it's sure Sinek. Yeah. Sinek. Sinek. Yeah. I'm not sure, but he is one of the best that start with why the why. Yeah. And I think and that leaders, leaders eat last is his other one. That's really good. And that's yeah. a great, I mean, that's a great title, right? right? And the book itself is great too, but that leaders eat last mentality of, yeah, you got to serve the people and lead from the back. And, um, but that starting with the why and the passion, if you're not passionate about it, it's going to be stressful. But if you're, you know, if it's something you love, it's going to be passion. And that's, what's going to, put you through when you feel like, gosh, we're not getting enough gyms or yeah, we're not right. getting the traction we want, or we're not hitting the target goals. But that passion is obvious and it's clear behind both of you that you guys do have that passion to see this thing through and see it be successful. And it is needed. And like I said, I'm glad we were able to get you on because I'm a yeah. firm believer in your product. Yeah. And I'm not just a believer, but a, a user. Yeah. So I want to see it be successful and I want to see more opportunities, more venues, and I want to see more users. But I know as more users come on, there'll be more competition. <laughs> right? But I definitely am here and going to be able to do what I can to support. So we'll put up on the ticker there. Um, pretty easy website to remember. <laughs> it's not too definitely says it and it's easy. So sportsource.com. It, and I'm, is there a way that they can contact you on there? Yeah, there's a, there's a contact link on there. They can also DM us on Instagram. It's just at sportsource app if anyone has questions, but there's a download link on the website to, to the app. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so if you're watching and you're interested in either internships or using the app, you can get it at, Apple Android app store on the app store. Yeah. And we can also, I always try to tell people like on the host side, we can always come in and help you set up your listing too. If you're feeling tech intimidated, but it's really user friendly and easy um, to set up. Well, that's great. Well, I really appreciate you guys taking some time. Do you guys have any final <laughs> words that you want to say? leave our audience? Maybe five, maybe 10, maybe a hundred, maybe a thousand people will see this, but yeah. it will live <laughs> on the internet as long as the internet's right. around, <laughs> which I don't think the internet's going anywhere. Not I think, going anywhere. I think yeah. it's here to stay. So any yeah. last parting shots? Oh, I would just encourage people to check it out. Like go do something new with your family. Um, get active. Try a new thing that maybe you want to do privately. Like if you want to go try to do water aerobics by yourself, you can now do that on our app or do something new. Um, and if you're a host and you're really struggling from COVID and you're hitting that financial stressor, um, connect with us and we can usually help you even brainstorm like uses to get you some more money for your business. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for having Brand. us, yeah, thank yeah. No, it was a lot of fun. I, I was glad we were able to connect in yeah. person, which is kind of rare these days. Right. So it was awesome getting to meet with you guys in person and hear kind of the story and I'm very appreciative of you guys hopping on today and. Um, look forward to seeing Sports Source take off nationwide. And I think you said worldwide. Is that the That's the goal? Yeah. To be able to rent a soccer field in Paris. That's right. Sweet. There you go. 
that's awesome. Yeah. Well, again, thank you guys so much. And with that, we'll see you guys down the road. Thank Alrighty. you. Good to see you.